Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my review of Doctor Who Season 8 Episode 11, Dark Waters. I'm going to start by saying I actually liked this episode. I say that because looking at my notes, there is an awful lot of negatives. But I want to start by saying a lot of these negatives are little nitpicks. And there's a couple of big ones in there, but this is a good episode. Let's start with the spoilers then, shall we? The opening scene is of Clara saying I love you to Danny. Wasn't this already done? I'm pretty sure she already said I love you and yes this was supposed to be more intense like I'm going to be with you for the rest of my life sort of thing but it came across just cheap and just as a setup for the next bit where Danny Pink dies. Does this mean that the character of Danny Pink was purely a MacGuffin for this moment to get us into the finale? Because he hasn't really done much just been there for Clara to fall in love with and that's pretty much it. So does that mean he's only there to die so Clara can go looking for him to be in the finale because that's a bit cheap. I'm waiting to see if he does more in the next episode before saying that the character was pointless because obviously I can't tell the future. I have no TARDIS of my own to come back and make this review so we'll see. But as it stands now I believe the character of Danny Pink was nothing but a MacGuffin and it was pointless as for right now but we'll see. Then as we move along we get to Clara's morning and her, then her grandmother comes up to her saying oh it was terrible what happened and then Clara replies with it wasn't terrible it was ordinary. After hearing this I wonder does actually Moffat read what he's written after writing it? Yes. Without that being said it was clever that after all of these adventures with all of these aliens that could put everyone's life in danger at any moment he was killed in a car accident. That was clever. But then he says look look I've been clever see here's in your face yeah. It wasn't necessary it just again made Clara seem unlikable. It was yeah I get she was mourning and people say things in that situation what they don't actually mean but eh, it sucked it was none unnecessary yes it was supposed to make her have the idea but it could have been done with the grandmother coming in saying oh it's terrible and the phone's ringing and then the phone that miraculously answers itself let's not go into that but why comes up and it's the doctor and then she twigs just basically take that entire scene and just take out that one line it was unnecessary she could just hear the doctor's voice and say hmm I gotta go and grab the phone and say hey I need to see you and then we move on to the big terrible scene of the episode the volcano scene now Clara goes around the TARDIS picking up all the TARDIS keys and then she attacks the doctor with a sleeping patch then they land on the volcano and she then says you told me the only thing that can destroy a TARDIS key is a volcano. Why the hell would the doctor tell anybody that? Even if he trusted Clara with everything and there was no chance of her doing any anything like this. Why would you give her that information because maybe the Daleks could kidnap her and torture her for this information or read her mind and extract this information to destroy these TARDIS keys. Or maybe not the Daleks, maybe the Cyberman, maybe anybody could extract this information from her brain and say that's how we get the Doctor. So it makes no sense telling anybody this. Even if the Doctor knows this, it seems himself. It was stupid. That wasn't the worst bit. Then she says, go back and fix Danny's death or I will destroy these TARDIS keys. Now that's the problem with say the hostage situation where a guy goes to rob a bank say for example and there's only one guy that can get into the safe so he says open the safe or I will shoot you but if you shoot him you can't get into the safe it's that sort of thing because if she throws all the TARDIS keys into the volcano then you have no time machine because you can't get into it and you're stuck there so you can't fix Danny yes again she's supposedly mourning and not thinking straight okay let's chuck away then the scene continues and the doctor says I'll just throw him away I don't care pretty much I don't care just throw him away and pushing her to see what she would do supposedly and she throws away all the TARDIS keys then is revealed this was a dream the sleep patch wasn't a sleep patch it was a dream patch and he flipped it around on her just to see what she would do this sucked especially considering the continuation of it where he doesn't get angry with her he doesn't refuse to do anything he says okay and takes her to Danny anyway so that whole scene was completely 
pointless. It was just a waste of like five minutes and there was nothing gained from it, nothing lost. You started where you finished. What was the point? Then the Doctor flies to the underworld. As we land, we see the uh, 3W sign inside a Cyberman's like side eye as the logo. And if this was just as it is, then just looking at it in context of the TV show, this would be annoying because it then becomes obvious that it's the Cybermen. That being said, the Cyberman invasion thing was leaked from the start. It was, I believe, the first shot that was leaked from the series. So everyone knew it was a Cyberman. So I do believe this was kind of a clever way of using that. If no one knew it was a Cyberman, it would be stupid because you're just showing your hand. But because everybody really knew it was a Cyberman, it was probably a few people that say, oh yeah, I'm not going to read any news or look at anything that has Doctor Who in it. And they would have it ruined for them. But as it is... I think it was clever, especially for the jumping ahead a bit scene where he says, I feel like I'm missing something obvious and then the doors close and then they've got two of the logos like symmetrical each other, basically showing you it's a Cyberman's face and then the Cybermen come out. That scene was very clever because of the leak. If it wasn't for the leak, it would be too much and say, hey, why don't you just have Cybermen marching at the beginning? Because we all know it's them. Jumping back again, we get the first time the Doctor meets Missy. And Missy is pretending to be a droid. Not sure how I feel about it. Because part of me is like, it's clever because Missy's playing with the Doctor. So for Missy, it's a good scene. But for the Doctor, it's a very bad scene. Because it makes him look stupid. She puts the Doctor's hand on her hearts. As a hint, I'm not giving it away yet. But hearts and uh, the Doctor just stares there in amazement. Now, this would probably tell the Doctor that this is not a droid. This is not the droid he's looking for. Sorry, had to be said. And that there's more to this than meets the eye. So, going back a bit, knowing who she is, the kiss, it's still weird. And I'm going to explain it when I tell you who she is. Going on, uh, we go to Danny in uh, Heaven. Then uh, the guy that's talking him through this, uh, says he has a, someone who wants to meet him. And it's revealed that the person that wants to meet him is the child he killed in Afghanistan. I like that Moffat actually went there. It's a big controversial thing and I like he went there. But of course the fact that we all realise they're not really dead kind of negates this. So I... Uh, not too sure again but they actually went there for at least a little bit I'm highly doubting that they're going to remain dead from the end of the next episode again I haven't seen the next episode so I don't know but I find it hard to believe that they're gonna keep them in there although again if they do that would be a nice twist because Danny Pink's kind of an assistant he's not really an assistant he's kind of one and not very often do assistants die. In fact, I've only seen one in the classic series. I haven't seen all of them. Oh, apologies. Two. One was the boy that went around with the fifth doctor. He died and he stayed dead. And one that was with the sixth doctor, a girl. But then they did a little twisty, ooh, so she's not really dead. And apparently it pissed off the actress as well. But so if they do kill him, I will give Moffat a well done on that one, but I really doubt they will. Next thing I wrote down was a quote from Danny, which was talking about the boy he killed, saying, why would he want to see me? And then there was screaming and a big distraction. Basically, I say that that meant I want the boy to be there for the big reveal, but why would he be there? I don't know, distraction! So it was a bit like, I see my own plot holes, but I don't know how to fill them, but I don't want to correct them, so distraction! That annoyed me. Moving on, it was revealed that 3W stands for three words, and the three words was, don't cremate me. And it was said that if you're cremated, that your mind feels what your body is doing. So if you're cremated, your mind still feels the pain. Here's the problem with that. The Cybermen 
need the bodies. Because they need the bodies to fill out the suits to be built up, not just the mines. So they would have to take the bodies. Like, so someone dies, they take the bodies, put the mind into their heaven thing, and take the bodies, turn that into the Cybermen, and then put the mind back after it's had the emotions removed. But if the Cybermen have taken the bodies, then they can't get cremated. Maybe the Cybermen are taking note of who's supposed to be being cremated, and they're the ones they're converting. So when the mines are screaming because their body's being chopped up to pieces, they can say, oh, they're being cremated, but not actually be cremated, actually be converted. That could be clever. Next, Danny's voice appears on a computer and Clara is talking to him and I'm like, he, the doctor's like, maybe it's not him. Maybe they've scanned your mind and know the voice that you're looking for and it's a fake. Ask him something only Danny would know. If they're scanning her brain so they know the voice of Danny Pink, they could extract the information of the questions she is asking him. So if she says, what's my favourite colour? He says, blue. They could just read her mind, say, hmm, she's thinking the colour blue. So he says blue, and bam. That's not going to work. So again, stupid. Then of course the Cybermen come out marching, and they recreate the famous scene of the marching down the stairs scene. I actually like this shot. I'm not a big fan of the Cybermen, but I believe, with Missy being who she is, that these would be Cybermen used in the correct way. I don't believe the Cybermen are the masterminds, because with the lack of emotion and the lack of imagination, they can't think of plans. They can only say, we are going to convert the world. Okay, how are you going to do that, Mr. Cybermen? I don't know, I have no imagination. So, I believe they need a mastermind to say, you Cybermen are the foot soldiers and you're going to do what I say. Yes, I like the Daleks, which are very emotionless, but I believe with the Daleks, the Daleks say they're emotionless, but really they have the emotions, they have the fear of the Doctor, they have all the intelligence, but the Cybermen, they really are emotionless, they are just blank robots. So, Missy says, oh, we're going to convert the world, and you're going to be my army, and they say, converting the world? That benefits us, we're going to do that, that sort of thing. Now, we get to it, the big reveal. Missy is short for mistress, which means master. Called it! I said in the very first episode, that was my theory, and that was the one I was going to stick to, and I did, I called it, and that's the first time in Doctor Who history I managed to call a big twist. It was a bit of an obvious one, and I don't count it as a big victory, but I did it. That being said, I like her as the mistress. She's very good. She's a very good actress. She's playing out the craziness and the, she's not exactly the same as the previous one. She's different uh, but again going back to the kiss and the fact that she's calling the doctor her boyfriend that's kind of weird. That's kind of like a best friend because they were best friends at one point so close that they were practically brothers that goes away has a sex change and then comes back and calls that guy her boyfriend and then kisses him it's kind of a bit weird i know why moffat did this because hey if the master's going to be a woman then there's going to be sexual tension there and you know well, moffat's moffat and yeah you know, i don't think they should have kissed I don't think Missy should have referred to him as her boyfriend. I believe they should have maybe had a slight hint of flirtation. Just a slight hint. But for what we've got, I like her. But as coming up to the next episode, I'm looking forward to it. I was beginning to um and ah with the rest of the season being the way it was, but this episode has kind of wiped the slate clean. I don't want too many Clara scenes, but I really do think it was leaked she was uh, leaving the series. But it was never confirmed by the BBC or anyone that works at the BBC. So it's kind of up there. I do believe this is the last season she's going to be in. Thank God, don't want any more Clara scenes. She can be there, she can hold the bags. Just stay there while the Doctor and the Master does their thing. The Doctor and the Master, they're going to be the focus. The Cybermen are just there. They're the uh, MacGuffin to cause the pain. But let's see. I actually like this episode. It's a good build-up episode. Uh, I will give this episode a 7 out of 10, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please like, favorite, hit that subscribe button, share this with any of your friends that likes Doctor Who, and 
I am the food. Thanks for listening.